Hi, my name is Adam Levermore, and today I'm going to show you my method for making quick and accurate clipping masks in Photoshop. Now, there are a lot of different ways that you can make clipping masks and achieve this, the same effect in Photoshop, but this is the way I do it. Uh, and over the years, I've sort of refined my process, and I think it works pretty well and, and uh, gets me my results pretty quickly. So we'll go ahead and jump right in. I've created a background layer behind this image with uh, a bright green so that when I create the clipping mask I can see uh, where my lines are um, and it sort of pops right off the, the screen. So I've already created a blank clipping mask here and um, I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in on this character right here. Uh, I'm going to use a lot of uh, keyboard shortcuts as I go, um, and uh, I, I highly recommend them. Make your uh, uh, your life a lot easier if you're spending any time in Photoshop. Um, makes makes things go much much faster, um, and you work more efficiently. At least I find I do. Uh, so I'm going to rotate the image a bit using the rotate tool, and that's just R as uh, the keyboard shortcut on that. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and start outlining the figure. Now, granted, this is a pretty easy image to work with. It doesn't have actual hair. It's all plastic and hard lines. And that's good for this tutorial because really, this isn't so much a so isn't so much about how to fix or how to do the uh, the complex clipping masks, but how to be efficient with it. And in a future tutorial. We'll talk about how to do the more difficult clipping masks like cloth and hair and fur and grass and all those fun things that make you want to pull your hair out. Um, but I'm just going along the edge here and trying to be fairly accurate, but I'm not worried too much about being 100% precise because I can always go back in and fix any mistakes that I've made along the way. But you see, as I go, I've got that green from the bottom layer shining through because I'm creating a thin line of a clipping mask around this Lego figure. So we'll get the bottom of the foot here. And I spend a lot of time with that rotate tool when I'm using my pen, uh, especially to, to outline for a clipping mask. And it just helps me to, uh, to draw straight lines uh, with the direction that I, that I hold my pen. Um, straight up and down isn't always the easiest thing, so I adjust it to an angle that works well for me. So I'm just going to come in and get these smaller areas. I have uh, this brush set to uh, shape dynamics so that um, the, pen, the pen pressure is uh, controlling the diameter of the brush. And you see over here I went a little bit too far uh, into the character so I can just quickly switch from black ink to white ink and brush right over that area that I, I went too far and out pops the original art. So I'll switch back to black Keep working on the other side of the leg here, and making sure to get in those bumps and ridges. I don't want that background showing through. And around the little yellow hand. If you're not using a tablet already I, and you want to work in Photoshop a lot, I'd say stop what you're doing and go get yourself a tablet because it makes life so much easier than using a mouse. Um, I would never go back to trying to do this sort of thing with a mouse. Um, it's just too it's just too labor intensive and, and again wants me makes me want to pull my hair out. Um, so I'm going to fix this bit up right here. I uh, didn't quite get all of the 
background. Oops, I got the white on, so I'm going to undo that. Switch back to black and fix up the top of her head there. And a little bit right there. And a little bit right there. And overall, it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to zoom out again so we can see what we've got. We've got a, a thin line around this one character. And uh, previously when I had tried to make clipping masks, I would then get a huge brush and just brush everything else out. And some people do it the opposite way. They, they uh, go into quick mask mode and they brush all of the, the parts inside that they want to uh, make into a mask. But I found a, a, a much easier way to do it is you go up here to where your clipping mask is and hit Option or Alt if you're on a Windows machine and click on the mask. And all of a sudden you've got the outline of your clipping mask. And now you can go to your wand tool and select the big area outside here. And we'll zoom in so you can see what's going on. And you see it selected everything that's outside of the the figure that you want to mask and nothing on the inside. Now, if I were just to fill this this whole area with black like that, it looks great. Except when I deselect, if I zoom in here, you notice there's a thin halo around everything because of the anti-aliasing. It doesn't quite get all the way into um, uh, the starter mask that we laid down earlier. So I'm going to undo that and let's open this up here. Um, I've actually set up a an action that has uh, it's expand one pixel and what it actually is doing is it goes to select, modify, expand, and one pixel. Uh, and I've set that to F6 so, let's close that again. I can just hit F6 and I automatically expand my selection by one pixel. And now, if I fill that area with black and deselect, you see we've got a nice, clean area. It's filled in the whole thing and we eliminate that problem with the, uh, the anti-aliasing. So let's zoom back out again and we'll, again, option click on the mask and we'll lose our green background layer and there we go we have a quick and accurate clipping mask